If you own a geographic domain name or you live in Chicago, Illinois, you've likely heard of the website and brand Chicago.com and their at identity email address offering. Today, we're going to learn more about it, their success to date, their upcoming auction of email addresses, and much more. If you're thinking of selling email addresses on your premium domain name, stay tuned. Three messages before today's show. First, if you're a domain name investor, don't you have unique legal needs that require domain name technical know-how and industry experience? That's why you need David Westlow of Wiley Rhine. Go search for David Westlow on Domain Sherpa, watch his interviews, and you can see for yourself that he is intelligent and articulate, can help you with buy-sell agreements, deal with website content issues and UDRP actions, and can even help you write your website terms and conditions. David Westlow is the lawyer to call for all your internet and intellectual property needs. See for yourself at newmediaip.com. Second, when you have questions about domain names, where should you go to ask them? The answer is dnforum.com. Not only is dnforum the largest domain name forum in the world, but it's the best. You can learn about domain names in the industry, buy and sell domain names, talk about domain name news, and meet other domainers just like yourself. Register for a free DN Forum account and begin advancing your skills and knowledge today. And when you do sign up, send me a friend request so we can connect. My ID is Domain Sherpa. Finally, whenever I'm thinking of buying or selling a domain name, the very first place I go is estabot.com. Their service provides quick and comprehensive information about the valuation and the critical factors that you need to know about, like other extensions that are reserved, recent sales, search volume, and cost per click rates on search engines. And if you haven't tried their lead generator service for domains you want to sell, you're missing one of the most powerful tools around. Those are the reasons I pay for the service every month. Here's your program. Hey everyone, my name is Michael Seiger and I'm the publisher of DomainSherpa.com, the website where you come to learn how to become a successful domain name entrepreneur and investor directly from the experts. If you own a geographic domain name and you're interested in monetizing it, there are quite a few different business models available to you. One of them is to sell email addresses on that domain name. And today's guest has the industry's most developed product offering in that category. I'd like to welcome to the show, Josh Metnick, CEO of Chicago.com. Josh, welcome to the show. Hello. Good to be here. It's great to have you. So let me start off the interview with this question, Josh. Are people, regular people, willing to spend a lot of money per year for a memorable email address? Well, I guess it depends on, you know, it depends on how you define regular person and it de you know, depends on how you define a lot of money um, for for an email address. I mean, a lot of this stuff is is new territory. the The entire market we pretty much figured out by by accident. This whole thing kind of happened by accident, where we had um, we'd actually decided um, we, were, we were going through our PNL and we were looking at all the line items in there, and we realized that we were spending about two thousand dollars a month uh, supporting about fifteen email users because we still had a you know, server, a dedicated coal facility um, with its own, you know, software, blah, blah, blah. So our initial thought was the exact opposite of the, the product. Our initial thought was to terminate these users and, you know, close down the servers. That, that was our thought. Literally, the day, the day after we, we made that decision, I was with our CFO. We were going, we were like, okay, we're going we're gonna to send a letter to these users and give them about 60 days or something to, you know, transition to Gmail or Yahoo, whatever. We got a call out of the blue, um, which uh, we kind of, we kind of call the call from God, but it was a call from it was a call from Tony. Tony is a uh, Tony in, in Chicago, and he wanted an email address. He wanted Tony at, at Chicago.com. So we told him no. We told him that we uh, you know we used to just do it out of courtesy. If people would call us, we would you know we would give them a name. It wouldn't happen very often, but I had my personal cell phone tied to the to who is um, at that at that time. So every once in a while, you know. <laughs> Somebody would, would uh, some non-domainer would, you know, figure out what who is this and they'd track, track me down. Right. Sometimes we get like tourism related questions or like where's Legoland or. Right. Yeah, but um, 
So we, we told him no. And he said, uh, sorry, it's just something that we decided to, 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 you know, to stop doing. So he, he responded, he, he responded, well, how about if I pay you $500 for Tony at Chicago.com? So I like put the phone down and trying to, you know, not, uh, I don't know, make some kind of noise that would, um, I just, you know, indicate some level of shock, I guess. Right. You didn't want to scream for joy. <laughs> right, right, right. I'm sorry. Wait, let me speak in the phones. Let me, uh, let me, let me turn. That's this. probably somebody calling for an email address. Oh no, they can do that online now. <laughs> well, we're a small company, so depending on the time of day, um, our sales line might, might actually be answered by me. So, um, so that's, uh, that's so. Up, so right. Tony calls you up, says, "Hey, Josh, five hundred bucks. Can you hook me up with Tony at Chicago dot com?" Right. So, and so we we tell him, uh, "Yeah, we could probably do that. Let me, you know, let let us think about it, and we'll we'll get back to you." What happened was. Uh, one of our one of our uh, main sysadmins, um, his name is Tony Tony Buglio, and I've been working. Tony's like thirty four now or something, thirty two. I've I've been working with Tony since he was sixteen years old. He started with me when I my first ISP. Like he interned for us when he was when he was um, going to school. Interned. I don't. know, He was in high school. It's crazy. Um. So, wait. I'm sorry. iPhone brought up uh, something. Okay. Um. So Tony, we we had we had allocated this name. Basically, what I'm saying is, uh, we forgot that we had given one of our sysadmins Tony at Chicago.com. Right. And so we went to we went to Tony and we told him, um, you know, look, this guy wants to buy Tony at Chicago.com for, for five hundred dollars. Um, do you want do you want to split it with us fifty fifty? So it'd be, you know two fifty two fifty. And Tony said, uh, no, not 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 interested. And we're like, what? You know, I mean, two hundred it's two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. For, you know, I just like. But he said no. It wasn't. So I thought. I mean, I, th- I thought he was. I thought he was crazy. And and um, I thought the other guy was crazy for offering five hundred. So you know, we could have repossessed it. I guess. I and mean, I get questions like, why didn't you just you know take back the name? And you know, somebody somebody's when, when somebody's depending upon you know their email. I mean, to, to take somebody to repossess somebody's email, and it's a pretty drastic you know thing to do. So what we decided to do was to just let them negotiate and see if they can figure out you know a price and. The bidding got up to two thousand dollars. So uh, Tony, who wanted it, um, offered two thousand dollars, and then Tony, who had it, turned him down. He said no, and that's where the negotiation stopped. So I thought I thought they were both crazy. I mean, I thought <laughs> Tony number one was crazy for offering two thousand dollars, and I thought Tony number two was crazy for turning it down. So I had this whole you know kind of diatribe uh, that wound up in my head. I was I was going to yell at Tony basically, and um, you know tell him that it was really stupid to turn to turn it down. I I literally slept on it like I, I forgot to I forgot to uh, uh, get around really to to yelling at Tony. Um, people who know me pretty well, I get distracted by cool things like pretty easily. So I just never got around, <laughs> never got around to uh, yelling at Tony. But I fell asleep. When I woke up in the morning, you know, I was thinking to myself, what you know, like what would I sell Josh at, at Chicago.com for? And there's no way I would sell for two thousand um, dollars. A lot of that has to do with the fact that it's been my digital identity for so long you know right so to, so it's not quite you know it's not fair to sit you know, to value that compared to a you know an email address that's on there that hasn't been used that's you know that's on the open market but um, there's some value there and we couldn't figure out what that value is so we made a decision then to um, instead of instead of canceling these 15 users we chose a, a, what we thought was a pretty high price point. In fact, to our knowledge, and we did pretty extensive searching around, and I've been provisioning email systems for 18 years in one way or another, you know, since the, the first ISP we had in 94. Um, I've, I've never heard of anybody charging, you know, $200 a year for an email address. Yeah. But we decided, we decided to uh, try it with that price point. Uh, $200, so we're going to go back to these 15 users. And this was our first uh, real pricing experiment. We did, we've done a number of these over the last 18 months. Um, so we went back to those 15 users and you know, basically wrote them a, a nice letter but said, you, you know, we have costs as well. And to, you know, to support this, if you want to keep your email address at Chicago.com, it's going to be $200 a year. Or we can help you transition over you know, 60 days. Uh, we expected some pretty hard blowback. Like we 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 expected people serious- to get irate. So like, how can you take away my email address? Right. Right. Many of these people have been using their addresses for ten years, et cetera. Um, so what happened was fascinating to us. Um, so what what happened out of those fifteen users? 
basically what happened was the exact opposite, again, of what we expected. Um, one person was irate. You know, one person was like, how could you do this to me, et cetera. Um, one person simply said, no, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. One person never got back to us. But 12 out of the 15 renewed, um, you know, basically within the first two days. I mean, wow. We had credit cards or, or uh, you know, promised to send a check. So 12 out of 15 said they would pay you 200 bucks a year to keep the email addresses that they've been using. Right. Right. So that was the first, you know, that, that was the first experiment we did. So we're like, okay, wow, this is interesting. So it's, you know, $2,400 a year, you yeah. know, re revenue. Um, but the, the, it's not really a fair test because these individuals have been using these email addresses for 10 years. Right. So there's a switching cost that comes into play. Right. Right. Um, and I guess you know, to go to go back, like we, we actually got we, we saved emails from the other 12 users that they were so grateful to be able to keep their address. It was like the, the exact opposite. There's like $200 was nothing to them. And we got these letters saying this is awesome. I get to keep it. Like, thank you so much. Blah, blah, blah. I think part of the problem was, you know, it was a really informal relationship that we had with these users. And wow, why is this keep I think I'd learn how to. I'd, I'd I know forgot how to, to remind you before we started this interview. I have my checklist. I'm like, oh, Josh, switch your Skype to Do Not Disturb. Blah blah. blah. I forgot to ask to turn off the uh, the phone. So the my phone. my apology. Yeah. Well, if it doesn't turn off this time, I'm just gonna smash it or something. Maybe <laughs> it's in the machine or something. I, I swear I had it turned off. That's weird. Okay, so um, so we think one of the reasons why people are happy is because we didn't have an explicit contractual relationship right. with these users. We think many of these users thought they kind of, you know, got this email from Chicago.com on the down low, and Chicago.com didn't really know about it and kind of let them get away with it for a while or whatever. Right. But <laughs> paying for it, it formalized the relationship where they knew um, with you know assurance that they that they could that they could you know hold on to it. Right. Um, so the feedback we got was actually positive, not negative. But from a price testing standpoint. Very important variable, you know. Like it, it's uh, it's perhaps easy to convince somebody who's been using you know first name at Chicago.com for ten years to pay a certain amount for it, sure. But what is what, you know what is the um, what does the open market look like? So the second test we did because we converted twelve out of fifteen, um, we actually raised the pricing. Uh, so we've done people have been tracking us. We've done we've done a number of price tests over over the years, and price testing is is um, you know is difficult because it's renew. It's not like testing a consumable product where you can test the price of sugar in one market, the price of sugar in another. I mean, customers talk to each other, um, and, uh, you know, it's a recurring, there's, you know, there's a recurring element to it. So if you start differentiating the pricing too quickly or, you know, by too much, then um, you start to have angry, you know, or confused customers. Like, why did I pay this much? And so, so you've got to be pretty deliberate about the way you do it. But the second test we did was um, we raised the price to two ninety nine dollars a year. And I sent an email out to about 10 uh, business associates that, you know, I've just done business with over the years. Um, and uh, one was a real estate company hit back, large real estate company in Chicago. And they wanted eight emails at two ninety nine. dollars So now we've gone from 12 customers, $2,400 a year, to, you know, one customer at $2,400 a year. So this is getting pretty interesting. Yeah. So we did some thinking on pricing, and you know we looked at the domain model. I was like, well, okay, so people, let's let's do a one year, three year, five year, and ten year um, pricing. So we did a, a second blast, and these were very small blasts. I mean, we, these blasts were maybe you know to ten, fifteen entities uh, that we've had you know relationships with over the years. So the the third test that we did, uh, we did uh, one year two ninety nine. Three years, seven fifty. Uh, five years, one thousand fifty, and ten years, uh, two thousand dollars. Sent that out. I was on the L. I remember I was coming back to work. I was on the L, and I was, I was reading my email on my, my iPhone, and I saw order come through for ten thousand dollars. It was one one company wanted to buy five addresses <laughs> for, for ten, ten years. Ten years each. Wow. I, I was like. Holy cow! You know what's going on here? Like this is this is really interesting. Um, so four days later, um, that company told another company about it, and this other company bought sixteen uh, addresses. Um, not all of them for ten years, right? So it wasn't a, it wasn't a, a thirty-two thousand dollar order, but uh, some of them were for, were for ten years. Uh, most of them were for for one year, and we noticed the the um, the names of the people who were buying these things, like Rahm Emanuel. Um, the, it has ROM at Chicago.com. 
Richard Daly as rich at Chicago.com. Like the level of individuals that were buying these names was, um, you know, pretty strong influencers. If, yeah. If, you know, to say so lightly. that's who was buying the names, public uh, officials. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I think Daly is in private practice right oh, now. Right. Yeah. Um, but basically famous Chicagoans, if, if wow. you will. You know, there's a bevy of kind of, you know, famous and, and people involved in the tech community here. Yeah. That started buying these things. Uh, so, the, so the whole idea is that people feel so strongly about living in Chicago, working in Chicago, raising their families in Chicago, that they're willing to spend a premium to get their first name at chicago.com and if they tried to purchase you know rom at romemanual.com or something like that it just wouldn't have the same emotional impact correct so there's a concept I, I knew nothing about this in all the years you know that we've been doing that I've been doing geodomaining so 10 years or whatever I knew nothing about this concept called uh, it's called place identity mm -hmm. and there are people who have postdocs in in you know spend their entire lives um, studying this one subject and you know essentially you know of, of oneself your one self identity is you know composed of a you know say a pie or whatever of different um different elements mm -hmm. and you know for different people uh it's different it's different things but typically uh where one is from where one lives is the single largest component of one's identity mm -hmm. um there's other things in there like you know sports teams which in a way is, is place identity right um, you know religion uh, food, there's things like that, but the, the largest, uh, for most people, the largest single component of one's self-identity is where you're from. Um, you know, when you meet somebody, what's the, if you meet somebody you don't know, what's the first question where you, you from? typically ask? Where'd you come yeah. in from? Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it was so fundamental that it was right, in, it was like in front of our face for 10 years, and we never saw it. Um, so we started studying this concept. There's a lot of really interesting, uh, papers that, that are out there, academic papers on, on place identity. So I would, if you own a geo, um, I would highly recommend, you know, Googling that. Um, we actually purchased some, um, some of the research we bought online um, from some professors who had written some stuff back in the 70s, uh, which was just fascinating to, to read. And it, it talks about the kind of psychosocial attachment people have, you know, to their cities and, and, and why that is. Um, so we started to, you know, understand that. Um, I ran into Thies uh, Lindenthal. The, uh, I guess he's the head of product development for CEDO. Um, I ran into him at Prague, uh, I'm sorry, at uh, ICANN Toronto. Mm -hmm. And, you know, somebody was like, uh, you know, you've got to meet Tease, you've got to meet Tease. So fine. So he, he got Tease and I together. Um, Tease actually did a, a fascinating study on, on place identity and, and domain names where he downloaded, the, you know, the entire dot com root zone and then searched for American city uh, uh, strings. In, in the dot com you know root zone file, what he found was that there were four four cities that have a disproportionately large number of uh, domain names with the city string in those domain names, mm. and those cities were uh, I don't know the, the exact or, you know in, in order, but the cities were um, Chicago, mm -hmm. Boston, New York City, and Miami, mm. and. Looking at the raw data that I saw, and I may be off on this a little bit, but because it was presented on a kind of relativity um, chart, I didn't look at the exact exact numbers. Sure. You know, the amount of domain names containing Boston is, I think, equal to or larger than the amount of domain names containing Los Angeles. So it kind of makes sense. I mean, you know, you think you know, you think about people, you know, people from Boston, like they just, you know, they love their sports teams, they love right. their, you know. Um, and Los Angeles has has uh, you know I just think you know there's LA.com there, there's there's you know lost dash whatever there's just different um, it's a different uh, attachment I guess that people have to that city at least that's one yeah definitely one theory so yeah so so you started doing um, pricing experiments seeing what people would pay and you continued to discover that people were willing to pay higher and pay for longer terms of their rentals of an email address. And is it, is it essentially that you were doing like you were becoming like a registrar for email addresses of Chicago.com? People didn't actually buy them and own them. They were just the registrant for a, a specified period of time. Well, we, we, um, so we began to think more about, you know, how, how do we treat these as discrete, digital 
you know, assets. And so, you know, we're not a registrar per se, uh, but we decided that, you know, when that order of 16 came through in one day, it was clear that we had to write some kind of system that would automate, you know, the fulfillment um, right. of the, you know, of the names. So that's, that's when we decided to, you know, to start building out that identity. Um, I met with Amar Kuba in Los Angeles. It was, um, no, I'm sorry, it was Fort Lauderdale for Florida. It was a traffic conference. Um, so I met, I met with Amar Kuba for lunch. Amar and I have known each other for a long time. And I told him what was happening with, uh, you know, with the pricing. And he couldn't, I mean, he, I know he believed me, but, you know, <laughs> like, you know he's like, I, I, you wouldn't be, there's no way you'd be lying to me about this. <laughs> You'd lose all credibility for life with me, but but this is you know how replicable like, how replicable is this? How sustainable is this? Um, and I didn't really have a good answer. You know, I was like, well, it's happening. I mean, I know right. it's it, it's happening. So there's there's something here. And Amar and I decided to, to form you know Identity LLC, which is the platform um, behind you know at at Chicago that enables other domain names to do what we're doing. Gotcha. And I want to ask you more about uh, your partnership with Amar. Um, so right now, how much are the at Chicago domain names going for? Okay, so we're still we're we're still doing some price experiments. Um, we sold so somebody approached us about uh, three months ago or so, and they wanted lawyer at Chicago dot com, mm-hmm. and they had already purchased one name from us. I think they had purchased uh, uh, bankruptcy at Chicago dot com. It was a bankruptcy attorney, and. He bought that from us at two ninety nine a year, and then he came back and said, "I'd really like lawyer at Chicago dot com." We're, we're like, "Well, you know, that's probably going to cost a little bit more than, you know, bankruptcy at Chicago dot com." But how much more? You know, we we don't know. So the the pricing, and I'm, I'll 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 get to kind of where we're going right now. But um, you know, the pricing that we 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 just kind of picked it out of thin air. We're like, okay, well, you know, how about seven hundred and fifty dollars up front and seven hundred and fifty dollars a year? Yeah. And he said, great, let's do it. Okay, done. I tell that story to people now, and they're like, how could you let LawyerChicago.com go for $750 a year? If you would have told me, you know, two years ago that I would sell LawyerChicago.com for $750, you know, setup fee and $750 a year, I would have, you know, thought you were insane. Right, sure. But now they have a point. I think we undersold it. And so, you know, the larger point being, we don't know. How to price these things? The market knows how to, how to price these things, sure. and that's why we're moving towards an auction model. Um, but we're still we're still testing some other um, like we have some buy now options similar to you know to eBay where you can right. decide whether you want to buy it now for a higher price or wait for the auction. Like so I that, can go on there right now and and buy Michael dot at Chicago dot com, and you'll set a price right off the bat for that one, won't you? For first name dot last names, yes. Yes. And how much are those per year? Uh, those per year, um, we did some te- we did some pricing um, price testing over the last twenty four hours that was bumped to ninety nine dollars a year. Okay. The actual pricing, so to, we're moving the site back now. Um, the actual pricing of those is uh, forty nine dollars a year for the first name dot last name, and all first name dot last names include first name and last name. So you would get Michael dot Seiger and Michael Seiger. Okay. So there'd be no other, yeah. Great, and that's forty nine dollars every single year. And are you allowed to raise the rates, or as long as I continue to pay, I'm I'm locked into forty nine dollars per year? We our terms of service. We we are allowed to raise the rates. Okay. Um, and I think we need to be careful about that because you know you, you can only you can only raise the rates you know so much. Right. Before, you know. Sure, that makes sense. So. Those are you're still doing price experiments, but those are fixed at forty nine dollars, or those are priced at forty nine dollars right now. But clearly, if I wanted something premium, more premium than my first dot last name at Chicago dot com, like I wanted Michael or Mike at Chicago dot com, that would come at a higher price point. Or if I wanted, um, you know, domains at Chicago dot com, that might because that's a premium word that might come at a higher price point. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. And so right now, can I go on there and buy Mike at Chicago.com or must I go through this auction that we're going to talk about? Okay, so we have, we're doing the auction in two phases. So we have a phase one auction and a phase two auction. The phase one auction um, goes, uh, I think the auction closes end of May or uh, first week of June, I, I forget, but it's somewhere around that time frame. We're only taking uh, 576 names 
to auction at that phase. Those 576 names consist of roughly 200 uh, keyword names, as we call them. So, you know, doctor at chicago.com, attorney at chicago.com, et cetera. And we have a list of those names. It's in pool system. You can see them all. And a hundred of the most popular uh, last names from the United States uh, Social Security da uh, database, as well as um, it's about 200 and, I don't know if my math is, make sure my math is right here. It's about 176 or so uh, first names, female first, you know, female and male combined first and first names. Yep, your math is correct there. Um, great. So 576 names going through phase one. And then what, and so basically you're saying let the market determine the price. Yeah. Is there a minimum threshold? Does it have to be $49 opening bid? We have, so we have, we have uh, minimum thresholds in, in tiers, and those tiers uh, fall into three categories. Our least expensive product, you know, the first name dot last name is uh, $49 uh, a year uh, recurring. Right, but, it, but just in the auction, you're not doing any first dot last names for the auction. Well, it's actually, it's actually an option that, that somebody can, can choose. Um, it's actually an it's actually an option that somebody can choose. Um, oh, okay. Now, I thought you said 200 keyword names, 100 last names, and then 176 first names. So there's a phase. So there's a phase one auction and there's a phase two auction. The phase two auction is in September. Okay. So the only names that we're allowing to be sold in that first auction are those 576 names. Okay. Just those 576. There right. is a minimum associated with each of those uh, each of those email addresses. Uh, yes, there's a reserve price on, on each of those. Okay. And they fall into three different tiers. And what is that? What does the first tier start at? So the first tier is $49. Uh-huh. Uh, the second tier is $249. And the third tier is $499. Okay. The $249 a year is for a first name or a last name. Uh, $49 a year is for what we call name plus, which would be a first name or a last name with one initial on either side of it. So like, you know, Michael C. or M. Seiger. Yeah. And the uh, $4.99 a year uh, is for the keyword names, like, you know, which includes the domain names. So I think that's important to remember. When you buy doctor right. at Chicago.com, the, you know, the subdomain, the domain name uh, travels with it. You buy rights to doctor.chicago.com as well. And we don't split those rights because we think it'd be strange to sell one to one entity and, you know, another. Right. Together. Definitely. Okay. So let's say that... Um I love domain names and I live in Chicago and I want to buy domain names at chicago.com and domain names.chicago.com. Let's just say it was in the pool, which I'm not sure if it is or not. I didn't check. And okay. let's say that it's at, you know, the premium $4.99 um, uh, opening reserve price. And I am the only one to put in a bid at $4.99 and I get it for $4.99. Can I do what many domain name investors do? Buy it and then go out and find somebody to pay more for it? Yep. And sell it? Yep. Yeah. We allow explicit transfer rights. So we, we treat them very similarly to, to domain names. And we've had a few domainers who have done that. Like somebody bought uh, limos.chicago.com uh, and yeah. limos.chicago.com. Somebody bought, these are domainers, bought uh, exotic cars, I think, um, .chicago.com. So there have been a few domainers that, that have, have picked up um, some pretty good, yeah, some pretty good names. And then they just contact every limo service, or taxi service in Chicago and say, here's an opportunity to, to get into it. And just like they were buying a domain name for 500 bucks, they buy this. Well, they are buying a domain name, a third level domain name dot Chicago dot com. And in addition to the email address. Excellent. Um, so this is an opportunity. Do you look at, you know, when I hear this auction and who you're partnered with, and I'm going to ask you more about that, I think this is for end users. This is for people that live in Chicago, that love Chicago, that want to own a piece of Chicago for the rest of their life, and I self-identify with it. Mm -hmm. But there is a significant opportunity here for investors that do this for on a daily basis with domain names. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, I've got to be careful about. Uh, I don't know exactly know how our industry is regulated with you know blue sky warnings and <laughs> stuff like that, but. Um, We've seen some pretty good names go for, for prices that uh, I think were wise uh, to buy. All right. I'm going to ask you why you chose pool.com later in the show. How many, how many email addresses and domain name pairs uh, have you sold to date at chicago.com? Okay. So we're still pretty small. Um, we're closing in on about 500. Okay. Um, and our next goal is 1,000 
um, names after that. Our next goal is 2,000 after that. Why do you, um, uh, what do you think has been your biggest hindrance to date in selling more of these email address domain name pairs? Marketing. Yeah, lack of marketing power. So the Chicago Tribune deal we signed on, on February 26th, which was a, a critical deal. It was, uh, I don't know, nine or ten months of negotiations um, with them. And that's a multi-million dollar marketing deal over uh, three years. So without something like that, um, you know, it was mostly word of mouth. I mean, we'd send these blasts out to a thousand people. Um, yeah. People would refer friends. We're, we're a small company. So, you know, we don't, um, up until the Tribune deal, we really um, didn't have much of a marketing budget. Um, now we've got a multi-million dollar marketing budget just focused on Chicago, and we're starting to iterate the message and see, you know, what, what types of uh, words work, what doesn't, what yeah. price. Okay, so you, you just put in place a marketing partnership agreement with the Chicago Tribune Media Group. It's a multi-year deal um, that will reach hundreds of thousands of uh people around the Chicago area because it's millions. the largest millions yeah. millions I'm sorry um, because it's the largest media group in Chicago is that correct as a whole yes yeah um, I think the sometimes circulation like the newspaper circulation itself may be bigger but as a and, and just just they're kind of neck and neck with each other however okay. Uh, yeah. The Chicago Tribune owns, you know, WGN, the television station. They own CLTV. It's a 24-hour uh, Chicago-based news channel. They own Hoy, the uh, largest Spanish language uh, daily. Um, we've we've sold, sold Spanish language names. We sold Avogado, uh, dot, dot Chicago dot com and Avogado at Chicago dot com. Um, so, you know, as, as they, 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 I think they have 80 something suburban newspapers. They've got huge web properties. They've got direct email lists of yeah. millions. So they of reach a massive number of people. You have a great offering. They reach a massive number of Chicagoans. And you've spent the past eight or nine months discussing how you could work together to sell more of your properties. The Chicago Tribune Group is giving you millions of dollars in marketing budget. What do they get out of this partnership? Right. It's Well, to go into the details of the partnership, I can't um, – you know, I've got – like NDAs, like seven ways sure. to fund or whatever the expression <laughs> is. So I don't particularly feel like getting sued going into the details. You know, out of bankruptcy now, company. Um. So, uh, yeah, those those details are okay. But it's fair to assume that they're getting compensated somehow by the sale of of uh, email addresses and domain names. Uh, they're in the business of making money. So all right, so they will somehow make money in this marketing relationship. Sounds yeah. great. Um and. You know, I'm, I'm interested in how these media partnerships are formed. When you had this idea that you wanted to reach more people and you're looking around, the Chicago Tribune is on your desk and you're looking at w, you know, the, the stations that they own and everything, how do you make initial contact with somebody at, at that media group to even have a discussion about partnerships? It's a great question. And, you know, the Chicago media landscape has been in, in turmoil for what I would say, you know, the last 10 years. Um, there's two large media entities here, essentially. There's another Cranes, which has actually grown um, pretty well. But we've got the Sun-Times group, um, which is owned now by a company called Reports. And you've got the Chicago Tribune. Uh, starting back with them, um, there, was, there was a scandal with Conrad Black. He was the former. So, so the Sun-Times was owned by a Canadian company, Hollinger. There was some kind of scandal there. Um, I don't know if Conrad Black went to jail. There was some kind of criminal trial or whatever. So, um, and then while that was going on, uh, both of these companies, you know, it's, it's very difficult to be a print you know, news operation these days. It's not, yeah. not a popular business to be in. So um, the Sun-Times was having uh, like criminal legal issues. And the Tribune was having uh, just business issues. They were headed into bankruptcy. And ultimately, uh, the Sun-Times was having the same types of business issues. So both companies went into bankruptcy. So, you know, we know a number of, we know a number of people over there. The, the problem wasn't, uh, wasn't really, you know, reaching out to these people or getting a lunch meeting with them. That, that was pretty easy. The problem was that we had to wait for these companies to come out of bankruptcy <laughs> before we could do anything with them. Right. Now, so we're just sitting there on the sidelines, like, you know, wait, wait. Chicago Tribune came out of bankruptcy, um, I think, like, December 31st or something, like, literally, like, end of the year 2012. We signed our deal with them February 26th. 
So if that tells you something, <laughs> you know, and we've been negotiating with them for so, so, uh, you know, our contact there, Bill Addy, uh, he's the head of all digital for Tribune. So not just Chicago Tribune, but LA Times and Hartford Courier and, and, and all that. I've known Bill for a number of years and, uh, I always, I always kept a list. If this helps, maybe somebody's like a business development philosophy. I always, um, it's like a sticky note on my Mac. Uh, I kept a list of like the 10 most important people that could, you know, affect our Chicago.com's fate if I could develop a relationship with. Oh, and, you know, Bill was towards the top of that list. So, I, you know, I'd ping him from time to time. We'd get launched. We'd stay in contact. And then um, as this product launched, uh, he's pretty forward thinking. So he, you know, he thought it would make a good partnership. So how would you pick the 10 most influential people that could help the development, further development of, of Chicago.com and, and pick Bill Addy, who's director of uh, digital media, not pick the, you know, editor in chief or the publisher or, you know, the, you know, the family member that owns it or, you know, a host of other people that were potentially higher up in the hierarchy. Um, well, we we did contact a number of those individuals, um, and we you know we tried not we tried to you know not be annoying uh, most sure. most of the time, you know they would take our call, um, and I I actually met with um, one of the family members who 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 owned the you know Chicago Tribune at, at one point in time, and I said, you know Mr. X, dude, why don't you just buy us? I mean you're Chicago Tribune, like we're Chicago.com, just just buy us, and you know he looks at me and he goes. Uh, Josh, I can't. Even if I wanted to, I can't. We're, we're in bankruptcy. We're hemorrhaging. Yeah, we're in bankruptcy. <laughs> like it's all—all all the decisions are, you know, are, are up to the courts, and yeah. we're, you know, relative to the debt and, and size of these entities, like we're, you know, still relatively small. Um, so even if they wanted to do something, they, they couldn't. So yeah. um, I think we, you know, we just kind of hit the right person at the right time. But Bill um, was unique in that Bill understood the vision. Uh, from the get-go, he got it. Like we actually saw an order come through for Bill at Chicago.com. <laughs> I, I, I knew Bill, you know, before he, he ordered it. I'm like, wait a second. Like he's a, he's a customer. Um, so he he bought a first name at at full price. You know, he didn't call us and ask for a discount. Yeah. He didn't try to get some special. He just bought it. You know, Bill at Chicago.com. And um, you know, so that was some affirmation. You know, right there right. and. He, he's a digital guy. He, he's not like a legacy print guy who's trying to transform it. I mean, he, he gets it. So yeah. it's been really nice being able to work with him. Gotcha. So the partnership will last multiple years um, and it's kicking off this media market marketing partnership is kicking off in unison with the auction that's going to take place at pool or that is taking place at pool phase one right now. Right. Okay. That makes perfect sense. Um, all right, and I want to ask you about your first neighborhood uh, product that you just sold. But first, I want to go uh, back in time, Josh, and figure out how you first became involved with domain names, and then later how you uh, became an owner in you know some phenomenal geo domain names like Chicago.com, Illinois.com, Tel Aviv.com, and and many others. So. Let me first start there. How did you first discover domain names as an investment and business opportunity? Well, I, I think like a lot of domainers, but you know, by by accident, and we didn't really. I mean, I didn't I didn't see the business opportunity, you know, then. And I think every domainer who's been at this for a while probably has, you know, at least dozens of, you know, like had I done this, had sure. I done that, you know, kind of thing. Um, so I registered. I started an ISP with some friends uh, from college in uh, March of 1994, um, which was later sold to Exodus, which was a large hosting company. About five years later, definitely. So the first domain names that I registered were were uh, March of '94, and I remember um, I remember this one time. I'm sitting at the, I'm sitting at the front desk because I had like admin duties and sales duties, and my my role in this company. So I'm I'm like 21 years old or something. My my role was um, they would arm me with a bunch of print literature. They would uh, drop me off in an office park where there would be big signs say no, you know, no solicitors allowed. And then I would go door to door and, and solicit try, and solicit <laughs> and try to convince people that um, fax machines were not the way to go. It's like so weird. Uh, email that you really, you know, you really because this was kind of pre-web. I mean, the, the, what you know, uh, uh, NCSA right. and Mosaic was out there. Um, Netscape Corp was still, I think, called Mosaic Corporation at yep. the time. It was like even, you know, pre-Netscape. Yeah. So 
most people's connections were 14.4. I mean, the web was this kind of goofy, experimental, you know, even, um, anyway, you know, it was slow and all, all yeah. this kind of stuff. So most people were using the internet for, you know, for email or for telnet or go for, you know, stuff like that. Um, so I was at, I was at our front desk one day and this was back with the, with the old, uh, internet form that you had to fill out to get and all domain names were free. And I was sitting there and I registered, uh, flight.com and I registered chicago.org. And I registered Chicago.net. It was somebody else who had Chicago.com, but I got <laughs> Chicago.org and Chicago.net. And and then I registered uh, Guitar.com. And I kept turning over. I so saw my two partners at the time. I kept turning over, saying, "Guys, like, check out. I just, you know, I just got Guitar.com." <laughs> and they're like, "What are you doing? Like, it, it, what do you just go out there and sell dial <laughs> And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. So, like, you're, you're right. You're right. And my big mistake was, uh, you know, so I took my armful of papers and I, I'd go to some random office park and I try to get people to sign up for, you know, 19 bucks a month to our internet service when, um, you know, almost every single name was available you know, at that point. So I wasn't that smart. Um, if I, you know, if I were smarter, I would have had a lot, a lot, a lot more names. I, I did by accident. I, I did actually register a .gov. Which is um, I don't know if many people can say that. I mean, it was so wow. um, yeah, because those are restricted. And even back in '94, weren't dog, dot .orgs restricted at the time? Dot .orgs and and I think even dot .nets, you had to prove that you were you know some kind of network provider of some some sort. Dot .orgs, you had to prove that you were a nonprofit or something. So like how that. did you get Chicago dot .org at the time? Uh, I'm I'm not sure. Yeah. I'd, well, I'd love Paperwork. to see that application <laughs> yeah that would be great to see some of those initial applications yeah 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 I think we'll have just... <laughs> all right so you were at an, at an isp and it was ais.net which was the uh isp internet service provider so you were out there selling internet service before people really realized what the need was for the internet at that time most people weren't on the internet they weren't doing email you know they had a a telephone number and they had a fax machine number and they were good to go. Right. Yeah, email was was uh, pretty rare. But working at the ISP exposed you to domain names and uh, and that's how you uh, got some fantastic domain names. But at that time, you didn't actually get Chicago.com because somebody else had gotten it. Somebody had beat me to it, yeah. So somebody. how did you uh, come to own Chicago.com? Well, I... I you know, pretty quickly learned what who is, uh, or how to how to you know use who is, and I found out there was this guy named uh, Carl Swartz, who was the original registrant of the name, and I reached out. You know, I, Carl and I negotiated for five years. I, I I had been wanting to buy the name for you know for five years, and we could never come to terms. Um, at some point, and this was this was kind of just after the dot com bust, when I think expectations you know kind of yeah. came, came back down to reasonable. Um, he had uh, two offers on the table. He had an offer from the, oddly enough, the Chicago Tribune, huh. uh, for X amount of dollars, and he had an equal offer for me for X amount of dollars. The Chicago Tribune contract was, you know, like a hundred pages plus. It had all sorts of, you know, clawbacks and right you know, ability protections, and they were afraid of the chain of title. And, and like I, at this point. You know, it's it's when was this like two thousand or so, two thousand one? I mean, I, I I knew enough about the chain of title, and I've been corresponding with Carl for right. five years. Right. I, I knew a hundred percent that Carl, you know, owned this thing. So my contract was two pages, the purchase contract. So Carl's like same amount of money, you know, crazy contract from big company that wants to you know sue me if I do anything wrong right. or. As well, uh, we offered Carl a board seat. On you know, we, we as part of the the deal, we were going to form Chicago.com Inc. Um, give Carl some equity in the Nuco, so he would have some upside. Oh, nice. And, and uh, yeah, what you see, I mean, you see guys like Rick Schwartz, you know, um, you know, talking about you know things like that. Yeah. And I'm a big believer in, in in that. So is Carl still on the board of Chicago.com? Uh, yes, he is. Okay, excellent. Is. And um, see, a little bit of a web developer himself, um, he wrote the, if you Google uh, Great Circle Mapper, I think it's like GC, GCCmap.com, it's uh, Eric Schmidt, so, so ex-CEO of Google, that yeah. Eric Schmidt was interviewed by a magazine and uh, said that his favorite site on the internet, um, excluding Google, was uh, that site. Huh. 
which is a site that Carl wrote. It's kind of a technical site, but he's, um, yeah, he's a bit of a coder himself. Very cool. I'll have to go check that out. Um, so I see on your Twitter profile that you're an investor in Chicago.com, Illinois.com, Tel Aviv.com. Do you own those domains outright, or is that part of a, an investment group? So Chicago.com is owned by Chicago.com, Inc., which is it's an Illinois uh, S corporation. Mm -hmm. uh, Illinois.com is wholly separate. Um, Illinois.com is owned by uh, Illinois.com, Inc., which is also an Illinois uh, corporation, but it's a C corp. Uh, Tel Aviv.com it's a bit informal. Um, I own it 50-50 with uh, Skip Hoagland. Of, uh, he owns you know, Atlanta.com and Buenos Aires.com and Fishing.com and you know, a bunch of great ones. Yeah. So Skip, Skip and I own Tel Aviv.com 50-50. Um, do you own any other phenomenal geo domains like those? Well, we have, I mean, no, nothing at that level, no, nothing at that level. Um, we have a bunch of uh, phenomenal IDN uh, geos. Uh -huh. And those we, we picked up about, uh, most of them we picked up about seven years ago. What would and one of so those be? What's an example uh -huh. of one of those IDNs? Well, you know, we'll have like, uh, you know, France.com in, in Hebrew. I think we've got SiliconValley.com in Japanese. Um, you know, things, things like that. Mm -hmm. And do those get a lot of type in traffic? Some of them are starting to, yeah. Actually, out of our so our portfolio is not very big, um, and we have we have a separate company, Wyvern, which 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 is the portfolio of names, and uh, Patrick Carlton of AdPartnerships.com. A lot of people know Patrick because he was he was the head of Associated Cities for so many years. Um, Patrick and I are co-investors in in that portfolio. It's a relatively small portfolio. It's about two thousand names in that portfolio. Uh, in that portfolio, um, off the top of my head, I would say. The top ninety out of one hundred traffic names are IDNs. Wow! Seeing a lot of traffic, on, yeah. on, relatively speaking, on our IDNs. Fantastic! So you've yeah. got about two thousand domain names in in that portfolio, and then you've uh, you're you're part owner in a few different uh, uh, entities. Let's call them for some of the bigger domain names, and uh, you keep those separate because you have different shareholders or investors in them. I completely understand that. What I don't see, Josh, um, is how you came to own some of these phenomenal domain names. You know, I think some of these are probably, uh, I don't know, I'm just guessing six or seven figures when you bought it, if, you know, maybe six figures, they're probably seven figures now or eight figures, but, but they were a lot of money when you bought them. How did you get the money to fund these purchases? Uh, well, it was from the sale of my first startup. That's that's where it came from. I mean, I I didn't come from money. I was a single mom uh, raising three kids on a teacher's salary. So wow, we didn't. Um, yeah, we weren't we weren't like poor poor or anything. But yeah. we didn't. You know, I just didn't. I didn't come from a lot of money. Yeah. Um. So when we sold AIS to Exodus. Uh, you know, I, I did reasonably well on that, and it was it was a huge risk. I mean, I mean, <laughs> people thought, uh, and maybe some people still do. I don't know. I think I was, you know, it was it was uh, it was published. I think in the Sun Times that you know I paid mid six figures, you know, for for Chicago dot com, and you know, people thought I was nuts for you know spending that much on a domain name, and um, I mean, you know, we've we've had years where we've done you know more revenue than that, so. Things you know, things so far have worked out. Yeah, excellent. Um, is it is it safe to say that this year you're going to do more than that in revenue? Uh, it's hard to tell. You know, we traditionally um, and we run a, on a growth path with uh, hotel bookings and ticketing and, and advertising and travel related stuff. Pretty much what you see on every other uh, you know geo that's out there. That was our business model. I think sometimes you know one has to reinvent. Uh, mm -hmm. And pivot to to really, um, you know, to really uh, we were we were succeeding kind of marginally. I mean, it wasn't anything mind blowing. It was getting pretty boring, you know. Being a hotel affiliate site for eight years, I yeah. wouldn't have said I'm, you know, <laughs> these days at least. You know, I think it was it was a great business for a while. Now it's highly competitive. You know, Google's gotten in the game themselves, mm -hmm. so it started to get pretty boring. And um, when we when we looked at the cold hard facts, I mean, we've got a product now that has you know, very high margin, recurring revenue. We don't put a gun to anybody's head to buy the product. People right. buy this product because they love it. 
So we've got you know super happy customers. Um, all these things combined. So you know revenue wise, um, I don't exactly know what we're going to do this year. Um, the Tribune deal uh, did not factor into our um, estimate. You know we didn't count on that yet, so we have to kind of redo things. With, you know with that in mind. Um, but we took the risk of wiping every all other revenue streams to zero. So we can focus, you know, just uh, just on that product. Yeah. Now we now saying that we've got one other, uh, you know, things to do product. But our primary focus is the email. Gotcha. If I go to Chicago dot com today, it looks like it's the entire website is an event calendar. Right. So it so. I don't know exactly. Is that what's coming? That's what's coming up right now. Well, that's what I saw. I think yesterday or the day before. It looked like a really slick sort of Ajaxy event calendar. You've got, you know, the different neighborhoods. You've got uh, dates. You've got theaters, and you can click any one of them, and it'll self-filter the the main listing. So wherever you are in Chicago, if you want to find out what's going on tonight or tomorrow, bam, it's right there for you. It's pretty slick technology. Yeah, so so that that product now depending on depending on the time of day because we're we're doing some A/B testing right now, uh, okay. trying to see if if the identity product on Chicago.com converts better on the main site rather than email.chicago.com. We're just so we're doing some A/B testing, um, but the site, if not now, um, we'll be moving back to that what you described that, that we call it things to do. Mm-hmm. The code name for it, the internal code name for it, is, was a uh, time zero um, TZ because. I guess the vision, the vision for that product was something that I wanted to build for probably a decade or so, except I had yet to come across the development talent mm-hmm. that um, was truly needed to build something like is on that, that site. So the, the, the technology involved behind the scenes there is intense. Uh, we spent about 10 months um, in development with some amazing uh, developers. Uh, one guy, one of our developers, Gary, is getting his PhD in computer science and planning algorithms. Uh, Roberto, um, they won't actually let him out of Belize, uh, we think, because he designed Belize's entire military network. Wow. Um, so we've been trying to, I mean, we don't, we're not trying to, like, I think, we're not, you know, we're not trying to, you know, get him here. We just want, we just want him to, <laughs> so everything's been done virtually with him. Yeah. He's a killer developer. And then uh, Cedric um, Hurst, uh, who's our lead developer, at the age of 16, he he, um, he he doesn't like to to admit this, but he actually wrote some of the Internet Explorer uh, 1.0 code when he was uh, 16. He doesn't like to admit it now, but when he was 16, that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, um, so I mean, I guess Internet Explorer three or four, I guess, was pretty good. By then, yeah. But it, yeah, things have changed quite a bit. So right now, when I go to Chicago.com and I see all these events and I click on one, are you making affiliate income based on somebody buying that, clicking through to the website and and making a purchase? So at at the current, so we're we're going after more of a Google. It's almost like an anti-Groupon model. Um, we're, we're we're going after the kind of Google Twitter model where. The only thing we care about right now is is user utility. That's it. So gotcha. um, there's no advertising on the site. Um, we have no immediate plans for advertising. Um, we have a killer. Uh, it's it's not a proper app, I guess. But if you bring up Chicago.com on your cell phone, it's a killer HTML5 app that they mm-hmm. developed. It's a different interface than appears on you know regular web. I'll check site. that out. Um, and you know the goal of the the vision for the site is to be you know the most comprehensive, normalized uh, database of events and things to do in Chicago and we've written um, a number of like spiders and crawlers Google level stuff that kind of goes out to different event sites grabs it normalizes the information automates the process and uh, from the day of launch December 27th we were larger than the largest site they've been around for 10 years by you know about 5x in terms of number you know number of events Wow nice Um, I just went to Chicago.com on my iPhone, and it looks like it redirected me to identity.chicago.com, where you're selling your... uh, Okay, so that's part of the that's part of the A/B testing. Yeah, Uh, yeah, it's Wednesday, so as of yeah, as of tomorrow, (laughs) you can you can see uh, what should should be appearing there. All right, I want I'm looking for. By the time this video comes out, hopefully you'll be switched (laughs) back, so like uh, people can check out the. If you, if you go to things to do, if if you go to just spelled out without any, go go to things to do dot chicago dot com. Ah, okay. Let me check you, that out. That'll take you directly to to uh to that site. Things. It's to normally the main, do. the default mobile interface. Yeah. 
All right, things to do. Chicago. Com. It's loading right now. Maybe. All right. While this loads, let me look at um, my next. Uh, so that the site does look slick. You built the technology. You have spiders. You go out. You collect all the data. You normalize it. You put it in your own databases, and then uh, you serve it up quickly to people so that you know people know to come there and find exactly what they're looking for. Um, so I understand that. So right now you're monetizing the website, not through things to do, but you're monetizing through the email addresses and domain names that you sell as a pair. And how else are you monetizing Chicago.com? Uh, that's all. Okay. That's all. So it's, it's kind of nice. I mean, the, the, the old version of Chicago.com, you know, just started to look like a, like a Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah. We're just bolting on this thing here. It, it's nice to have this, you know, focus of, of you know purpose so we're, we're just seeing really focused on that, that one problem. and you see that all the time especially in media sites and you know I'm not pointing out Chicago Tribune or anybody you can point at all of them they all sort of turn into these monstrosities where they have the content but then they have these widgets that are functionality and then they have the ads all over and they ha sometimes have pop-up ads I know I went to the Seattle Times just yesterday and they had a pop under I thought we got rid of pop unders uh, <laughs> you know a good half a decade ago but there it was and so yeah, I know exactly where you're coming from, and as a media guy, I I uh, you know face that issue as well as we try and monetize these eyeballs that are coming to the website, and we don't have you know services to sell. You need to sell advertising, or you need to somehow take an affiliate income off of tourism. Uh, it it does muddle up the whole user experience. Um, all right. So it's interesting. I, I, I took a screenshot of a local uh, Chicago website. I'll just leave it at that. Um, so, like two days ago, I could not. I could not believe what I was seeing. I literally could not believe what I was seeing because the entire and this is one of the largest media sites in Chicago. The entire site, except the nav bar, except the horizontal nav bar, was ads. <laughs> Default view of the entire site was all ads. Everything. We're like. They don't. They just. They don't. They don't get it. Yeah. They don't get it. Like, look. It's not that hard. Like, like, look at Google. Look at Twitter. You know. Yeah. Look at. Like, look. Look at how. Look at how simple. No, there's a. There's a. There's a brilliant science that goes into getting it to that level of simplicity, but. Um, yeah. The, I mean, a lot of these sites are still stuck in like 1999. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about the uh, uh, what you use to power the email system at Chicago.com. I call it the at identity because whenever I see it, it's the at symbol identity. But then I think you referred to it earlier as identity LLC. How do you refer to the the system that powers your email system? So the name of the company that Amar and I formed uh, is 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 called literally Identity comma LLC. Okay. Uh, but the product, you know, the, the, we call it. Well, you know, colloquially, we just call it at, at identity. At kind identity. Of, okay, um, yeah. that makes sense. So you uh, started selling uh, these these email addresses. First, it was two hundred bucks a year. Then it was two hundred ninety nine dollars per year. Then you you came out with uh, you know one three five ten year packages, different pricing for that, and you started selling a decent number of them. It sounds like you were provisioning them manually. So you see an order come in for Josh at Chicago.com. You're like, I got to go into my MX server and add Josh at Chicago.com and set it up and then send out an email manually of how they need to sign in and use it. Part of that is true. Okay. <laughs> so so um, the entire uh, purchase process itself, the credit card processing, all that is, is, is automated. The letter that the user receives, the email that the user receives, and gives them some instructions on how to set it up, and also our support uh, phone number and our support uh, email, like that, that sends out in an automated way. The emails themselves, um, we still we we still set up uh, manually, and it's a little bit of a spot check to make sure that you know this is this is a real <laughs> this is a real order, this is a real entity. Um, we could automate that at some point in time. I mean, if we start getting you know hundreds of orders per day or something like that, you know, we could automate that. Sure. Uh, the system that we use, uh, it's an open source system that I uh, highly recommend. Um, it's called. Uh, it's kind of a weird name. It's on um, iredadmin.org. So it's I R E A D. Yeah. Let me double check. It's uh, yeah I R E D mail dot org. Okay. Um, and it's been a fantastic, huh. fantastic system. So, I-R-E-D, email, 
dot org. It's an open source without the e, without the e. So just oh, I, 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 you know, I wrote it down without the e, and then I read it back with the e. So it's i r e d email. E. <laughs> I did <it> again. <laughs> <laughs> iredmail.org and right. it's an open source system that allows you to manage these uh, email accounts yes yes and also lo allows us to provision uh, subdomain emails which we have been selling which is fascinating um, to me at, at right so you just sent me uh, um, an email and I'm gonna not reveal that the information of the email but um, you had you're selling subdomain emails so it's you know, neighborhoods such as Gold Coast in Chicago, and I don't know that neighborhood, but people from Chicago, I'm sure know that. So you can get a first name at goldcoast.chicago.com. And uh, I saw the email that just came through today for your first sale of a, of a neighborhood email address. That's pretty yeah, it's exciting. Really, it's, it's exciting. I mean, we, we had a theory that there was a market out there for it. Um, we weren't really sure. So we took the identity concept even further. So I, I'm calling, I don't know if it's actually a phrase or not, but I'm calling it like hyper identity where we go a level further. So we have sports fans. So you can be, you know, your name at cubsfan.chicago.com, your name at hawksfan.chicago.com. People are very passionate, obviously, about, you know. So we've sold some sports fan names. Um, then we have people in Chicago align themselves very much by neighborhood. Right. So if you're from Chicago, it's like, you know, what neighborhood, you know, or that's, that's, that's the where you're from question. So um, yeah, we sold our first uh, we sold our first uh, neighborhood product. The the inspiration for that was I noticed you know, um, I graduated state school. I, I graduated uh, University of Illinois uh, Champaign. Uh, my little sister uh, Becca she graduated Harvard, so she has one of those um, you know name at alum .harvard .edu, right. You know, it got me thinking like it's pretty power. I mean, it's a pretty powerful. Uh, you know, email address to, to has a lot of authority. You know, to it. Um, you know, not saying you know Harvard is, is you know is, is is all that, but obviously you know carries some weight. Um, so it got me thinking if you know about about our subdomain product. Maybe we can come up with something. Kind no, of it's true. I know a lot of people that went to uh, you know an Ivy League school that are still using their alum dot college dot edu address because it comes with a status symbol. Absolutely. I mean, you can't. Um, I will never get accepted back to Harvard <laughs> um, at this point. So uh, you know, you can. It's yeah, you can't. It's hard to get one of those. You know, yeah. it's it's a it's a it's a it's a uh, unique item. All or, right. So so you started selling addresses. Um, a lot of it was was not automated at the beginning, although the sales process was automated. You sold um, a, a good you know twenty or thirty email addresses, and then you went to Amar, Cuba. Um, who has been a past domain Sherpa, and you can go watch Amar's video for anybody that hasn't seen that one. It's a great one. And you said, hey, Amar, check out what's been going on here. Long story short, you ended up forming Identity LLC with him. Why did you feel like you needed to bring on a partner? It's a good, that's a good question. Um, I don't, you know, startups are tough. They are. Startups are tough. Most of us don't make it. And um, you know it's it's a it's it's a bit of hedging I think when you involve a, a partner so you you know you're going to give up that fifty percent or that twenty five percent or whatever you know the, the partnership might be, um, but I think uh, you know I, I think for for me it was important to have a, a partner who had deep connections in the domain space and particularly Amar because we wanted to build the system to scale mm -hmm. and you know his knowledge of how domain tools is architected, his knowledge of aftermarket. Um, we do hopefully see an aftermarket, a secondary market for these things actually at some point. Um, and uh, traffic seat, you know, just building up the, uh, the parking system. He has a lot of experience in scaling uh, large domain systems and he has a lot of relationships in the space. And um, he's just a great kind of strategic domain thinker, if you will, um, to have involved. So, you know, we gave away a portion of the company, um, but I think we gained uh, Quite a bit as well. Yeah, definitely. And when you say um, uh, we gave away, was it more than you at the time that that were an owner in this ad identity concept at the time? Yeah, well, technically, uh, Chicago.com Inc. owns it, its portion of ad identity because you know all, all the um, you know we're conflicted. It's like all, all the computers we use day to day, the resources we use day to day are Chicago.com uh, incorporated, you know, supplied resources. So. Um, we have I have some partners in Chicago.com. Our employees have you know uh, options in Chicago.com, et cetera. So by owning a part of Chicago.com, they also own a part of that identity. 
That ma that makes sense. So, um, can you explain from a technology standpoint how the at identity system works? You know, I I understand that. Well, I've gone on to at identity and I've looked at your fac uh, frequently asked questions, and I see that you are positioning the at identity. So you're positioning Josh at Chicago.com as an identity layer over an email system. So you're not supplying a new email system like Gmail or Yahoo. You're just supplying the identity on top of somebody else's system and they can use whatever system makes them happy. Right, right. So this was another early decision we made was to just get out. When, when these high profile individuals um, started to buy the email addresses, the, the, the thought was, well, you know, if we're going to be su supporting um, you know, Richard Daly's email or Rom's email potentially, um, uh, you need some, I mean, you need serious security, you know, right. and we don't have the budget to, to do that. So that was the first, that, that's what led to the decision. And then since we made that decision, um, I think there's other, like we can't, no matter what webmail system we buy, I mean, we can't compete with, uh, with Gmail. We can't compete with Yahoo. We can't right. compete with Microsoft. What we can compete on is the name. Um, there, you know, for certain people, um, you know, there's, there's, uh, you know, there's just no Gmail address or no Yahoo even as a brand, I think is fading. Yeah. Um, Hotmail certainly faded. Um, you know, you, if you see it on a resume, it's almost a warning sign. That's why I think, <laughs> um, Microsoft's been transitioning, you know, to outlook.com as a more professional brand. Right. So, um, yeah. So that was one of the reasons. So right now when I sign up for Michael at Chicago.com, you actually set up a mail record on Chicago.com for Michael, the email box Michael, but I use my Gmail system to pull it from your server and to send through your server. Is that correct? Right. We don't actually hold on to any email, so we have um, we have no inbox. Um, so we use Barracuda Networks as our MX uh, provider. So they, you know, they filter it all for for uh, spam or whatever, and then essentially what it is at a at a computer level, it's a it's a Unix alias. So, you know, we have a we have a web interface where we just set up a Unix alias. People tell us where they point it, where they want to point it to, and then you know, bam, we do it. Uh, the 3.0 system, we're working on a control panel where people will be able to uh, change that uh, themselves. Gotcha. So if I understand it correctly, and I'm not sure I do, Josh. If I have uh, Michael at DomainSherpa.com that I use as my main system, but I want Michael at Chicago.com, when I sign up for your service, I say, deliver all my mail at Michael at Chicago.com to Michael at DomainSherpa.com, and you just forward it directly over. Right. Okay, and then when I go to send email, I use an alias on my Gmail system to send it at, through the Chicago.com MX system. Well, it depends. We, we prefer that people use, so, so Gmail has their own SMTP servers. When you have a Gmail account, you can access their SMTP servers directly uh, and via you know, SSL and all that, Yahoo as well. Um, so we prefer that people use uh, you know, Gmail or Yahoo's uh, you know, SMTP services. You know, Josh at Chicago.com is Gmail underneath. Uh, not Gmail for business, not paid version of Gmail. Um, Josh at Chicago.com is plain vanilla free uh, Gmail. And the outbound inbound identity is seamless. Okay, so it is seamless on most email systems except for Gmail, actually. Where if I get an email from you, it'll say uh, Josh at Chicago dot com via Gmail dot com. That's true. Yeah, Gmail. Yeah, Gmail does. Uh, so we have we have our own SMTP servers. We have Chicago dot com SMTP servers. If it's that important um, to a user that they don't want that or whatever, then we just give them, you know, our Chicago.com SMTP server info. Okay, I got it. So then you actually send it through the Chicago SMTP and it shows up at joshuachicago.com and then nobody ever sees that it's coming from Gmail. Right. If they really are that concerned about it. Right. Okay. We've had, we've had a couple people that, yeah, that, you know, we've had to do that. So. Makes sense. So what other sites right now are using the Ad Identity email platform? Okay, so we've got, uh, well, four or potentially like 50 sites, depending on how you, depending on how you look at it, um, using it. But they're all, they're all on the 1.0 platform, which is the old platform. The Chicago.com 2.0 platform, which you see today on, on Chicago.com, um, is a huge improvement over the, the previous system. The previous system was basically a blank line with a search, and it kicked back um, very high price. It was very confusing for the average user to use. 
it was designed by domainers for, <laughs> for domainers. The new system is designed uh, for more average consumer to, to, to be you know, user-friendly, et cetera, et cetera, and should just generate different options for them that they might not think of. Uh, NewOrleans.com uh, is on the system. Uh, Nashville.com is on the system. Uh, Brookline.com is on the system. Uh, we have Tel Aviv.com is on the system as well. If you go to Tel Aviv.com, you'll notice that we have um, almost every major city in Israel uh, on that system. Wow. So that that system has, uh, you know, you can get Haifa.com or you can get Naharia.com or you can get you know Golan.com. Um, it's a big, huge kind of list. That's pretty awesome. Do you own all those names, or are you just partnered with all of them? Uh, we own Tel Aviv outright, and then we we partner. This is so. This is this is core to the ad identity business. Um, we we essentially license the MX records, or enter into a rev share partnership by licensing the MX records of uh, domains that would be good for the product. And so we don't um, all those names that show up on the Tel Aviv dot com site. Uh -huh. The only name we own outright is Tel Aviv.com. All the other names are owned by another individual who licensed us the MX record rights. Got it. Well, fantastic. And so I'm sure people who are listening to this interview are thinking, well, I own my city name. In fact, I own Bainbridge Island, the small little island outside Seattle that, uh, that um, you know, it's a great little community and, and big on tourists. And we have a magazine and a website. I've thought about offering email addresses. I own Michael at BainbridgeIsland.com, and you know it comes with instant authority whenever I'm dealing with any of the, you know, local merchants and stores. If I wanted to offer to the to the 24,000 citizens of Bainbridge Island their own name at BainbridgeIsland.com, could I use your system? And how would that work? Yeah, um, it's essentially um, so we have a software license agreement um, that includes you know the MX record it's, and it's a rev share agreement. Mm -hmm. The rev share can vary you know depending on how strong uh, you know the domain is or how much demand um, that we see. There's a fixed cost you know for us to set up each each customer. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. Okay, so who should uh, they contact if people are interested in learning more about the rev share percentage? Are you, well, first of all, are you willing to say what the rev share percentage is off on the record or does it vary too much by the the power of the domain name and uh i mean it it ranges between uh you know 70 30 um 70 us 30 the domainer to like you know 50 50 depending on you know who does what mm -hmm. um which you know for most domainers seems like a lot like they're, they're used to maybe getting more or something i, I don't know <laughs> um but 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 um i know you know with hotels we got um you know, something like, or I should say the, the industry average for, for hotels is, you know, somewhere around, you know, 7 to 12 percent or something. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of work involved on this, on the back end. And sure, and you deal with all the customer service and everything that's going on with... All billing, all invoicing, yeah. all collections, all customer service. Um, owner of the domain can be, you know, sitting on the beach. The one thing we don't do is marketing. So the, the marketing of the of of the the product is the responsibility of the of the domain owner. Um, that may be changing for certain sites as as we get data back on, on how to do it. You know how to do it right. Sure. We make it over for certain sites. That makes sense. And um, oh, the question just escaped me, Josh. <laughs> All right. So whom should they contact if people are interested in in uh, discussing that option on their own website? So they can contact me, just Josh at Chicago.com. Okay. That's fine. Sounds good. And I've also seen it on NYC.com. I did go to Nashville.com and I saw it there. It's identity at NYC.com, identity at identity.nashville.com, identity.nyc.com. Um, and it, Sean, I want to be I want to be clear too because Sean Sean Miller who runs NYC.com and I've known Sean for a long time. He um, you know, we kind of, I would say, kind of came up with this concept, like we were bouncing ideas off each other mm -hmm. simultaneously. Um, we're, we're Unix-based, they're Microsoft-based. Mm. So his system is actually um, his own system. Oh, okay. Um, you know, it's a very similar product, obviously, but he built his own his own system. Got it. And so um, part of the work that, that you do when you sell an email address is that domain name that comes with it. So if I buy Michael at Chicago.com, I also get Michael.Chicago.com. Correct. And then, how does that do? I do I get an admin interface where I can point that at another website and frame it, or do you sell website hosting services? How does that work? 
So the, the control panel is coming with the 3.0. Mm -hmm. So the control panel will allow you to change where the aliasing points, and it'll allow you to change where the where the domain points. Um, right now, it's essentially done manually. I mean, you, you call us, you authenticate that you you know you are who you are, mm -hmm. and then you tell us where you want what IP address you want the domain pointed to. The 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 um, number one success case we have for the domain is is a site called uh, or it's a company called Spot Hero, which is. Um, they just raised a bunch of venture money out of the West Coast and some out of Chicago. They're very successful at what they do. There's some other competitors in their space. They're trying to become kind of the hotels.com of parking. Mm -hmm. So instead of you know buying parking after the fact, you kind of look and see what parking is available before you go to a location and buy it. Right. Uh, they bought um, parking.chicago.com, kind of as an experiment. I mean, they weren't either like we weren't we didn't really know what to expect. They were our first customer. Uh, within six months of launch and minimal resources, I got, I got a call from um, Mark Lawrence, their, <laughs> their CEO. He's like, Josh, uh, parking.chicago.com is, is, has passed uh, spotero.com in the search engine rankings. <laughs> so, so like, we, we actually started to outrank. You know, Exact Match has taken a lot of hits, um, you know, last year, but it's still there. I mean, it doesn't... It, I, it's, I, it's taken a tongue lashing, we should say that, but it still has value. It and still especially has value. Especially, people are getting the value of that top-level domain, the Chicago.com, the authority value that that comes with, having a domain that was registered in 1994 till today in various incarnations. Some of that authority transfers over to the third-level domain. Correct. And, and that exact match, parking.chicago. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I see uh, that at Chicago.com has a service mark listed um, on the identity.chicago.com website. Is that a filed service mark with the United States Patent and Trademark Office? Okay. So uh, trademarks are established by use, right? Not by filing date. So uh, certain marks we have on file, uh, certain marks we, we don't. Mm -hmm. um, our trademark strategy is a little bit uh, of a black project right now. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on there. Um, but uh, some stuff we have on file, some stuff we don't. But as far as you know, data first use for the particular product that we're developing, I mean, we don't know anybody anywhere that's doing what we're doing, you know, except in those other cities. So we're, you know, we've been doing it for you know, almost a couple of years now. So. Yeah. Great. Um, and I was a bit confused when I saw that on that website you had dot Chicago, D O T C H I C A G O, because when I think of dot anything, I'm now thinking new GTLDs. Uh, is there a dot Chicago new general top level domain being applied for? And I went and searched through all the applications, and there isn't a dot Chicago. So you're actually using dot Chicago in a different manner. Well, you know, domainers tend to think of domains as, you know, we've got subdomains and we've got domain names. But if I go to my mom and I say, you know, or just the average person and say, um, you know, check out that domain name and it's, you know, uh, mail.yahoo.com or something, she's not going to turn around and correct me and say, that's, that's not a domain name, that's a subdomain. You know, like, that, this is, I mean, really, like, we're, we're like uber geeks in the domain world, so we get caught up in... You know, no, it's a subdomain. No, it's a fourth-level domain. It, it's a domain name. Um, so, it's a little bit of a different tactic. Um, we, you know, hopefully, we'd like to work with the city at some point. You know, to to apply for it. Similarly to, uh, you know, the way Boston.com did. I think we could. I think we could do well. You know, with them. Yeah. But um, right now, we're defining the product that way, and and uh, you know, at least establishing our rights to 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 use it. Sounds good. You've been attending uh, some of the latest ICANN meetings, Josh. I know uh, you went to Prague, Toronto, Beijing. Um, what are your thoughts about ICANN right now? Wow. Well, I'm, I'm you know, it, it's a shame that that uh, I haven't been attending these meetings earlier because it's it's um, I'm learning a lot. There's 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 so much that I, that I that I don't know. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of what we do is is not specifically domain related. You know, I would say our company is kind of a hybrid, you know, domainer slash software development company. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, like even the, just the, uh, the abbreviations are like, you know, GAC and, and, and uh, you know, obviously GTLD <laughs> understand pretty well, but um, there's, there's, there's kind of a whole uh, nomenclature, you know, and, and 
and clicks and all you know all the stuff like you know within ICANN and it's very political. It's it's um fundamentally political. It's just a political organization. Yeah. So um, you know, I'm I'm still very much just learning about the organization and so seeing how we participate. I, I've thought about going in the past, and I'm like, well, they're just going to talk about boring topics, and it's going to be discussion after discussion that doesn't lead anywhere. And you know, for me, that would be frustrating. What what do you find of benefit by going to the ICANN meetings? What's one thing that you've learned by going to, to a recent meeting? Well, some some of the relationships that have been formed there have been great. Like Richard Schreier from Pool.com. Um, I mean, we, we met him because he, he called us. Uh, <laughs> we got a phone call after we very launched the, the very first version of the system. We got a phone call from a guy named Richard and you know from Canada, and he's like, well, you know, this is broken, and that's broken, and, and you know, this isn't working, and that... And um, I actually appreciated it. He took this, this I didn't know who this guy was, and he, you know, he took about an hour of his time just listing all these things that were broken with the system. With your ad identity email with system. Version. Yeah. yeah. And, and I was like, wow, okay. Um, you know, we don't take offense to that, I and mean, we're just trying to build a better system. And this guy, whoever he is, you know, now he turns out to be the CEO of Pool.com, um, he, you know, he, he took time out of his day to uh, you know, give us some advice on how we can improve our system. Um, we never met him, so I, I met him in person at ICANN, and I think that helped, you know, cement the auction relationship. Um, lots of other individuals there that are just, you know, fascinating people to meet in the domain world. I, it, if, um, if you've been to the kind of regular domain conferences, not, I, I, I can't recommend attending an ICANN conference enough. The ICANN conferences are free to attend. They're free. Right. They're not a yeah. thousand bucks. They're not two thousand bucks. <laughs> it's not some, like, exclusive, like, you just have to get there. You just have to get there. Um, this little-known fact, like Patrick Carlton, I actually shared a room at a youth hostel in Toronto um, to save some money. <laughs> money. Um, uh, so our total stay was like 260 bucks for both of us, right? It was like a two-bedroom, like or two-bed room or whatever that we shared. Um, you know, at the Toronto conference, and the conference itself was free. You know, and there's all these you know, parties and. And and you just sign up for free, and then you get to go to all those fabulous after parties that I hear about. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a good deal. It's a good yeah. deal. If you're a domainer and you have not been to an ICANN conference, uh, go, just go. All right. Well, I have to find out when the next one is. You know when the next ICANN conference is? I don't know when it is. I, I, it's in Durban, I think. It's in South South Africa. Ah, all right. Are you going? I plan on it. Yeah, I plan on it. All um, right. Well, don't... upcoming next month, or actually at the end of this month, is the traffic conference in Las Vegas. I know Amar Kuba is going to that one. Are you going to that one as well? Uh, I put about 50% All chance. Right. I, I really like the traffic conferences, and I've, I've went to some of the you know early ones. I went to you know the one, uh, I guess, a year or year and a half ago you know with uh, Amar. Um, so I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make the trip or not. But All right. Well, I hope so. I'm going to be there, um, and uh, I'm sure a lot of people watching this show are going to be there as well, Josh. All right, Josh, here's the, the last question. I'm sure there are people out there that are watching the show thinking, you know, I've got some fantastic domain names that people, um, you know, are probably going to affinitize with sort of like the place identity concept that you talked about with geo domains. You know, maybe I own bicycles.com or fishing.com and people will want domain names. Do you have any advice to people, you know, given the information that you've had about chicago.com and where you see it going and, and sort of your projections on growth rates, do you have any advice for domain name owners that are thinking about offering an email opportunity on their domain name? Is there a certain number of visitors they should have per month or a certain community size or you know, certain relationships that they should have for marketing. Any advice that you have to somebody who's thinking about offering an email and, you know, domain name pair on their own property? Sure. Well, um, A, it'd be great if they were on our platform. Um, that would be, you know, because uh, it's not only the platform, though. It's We're developing this kind of shared knowledge pool, you know, between the different cities and the owners that are on it. So we're all trying different marketing approaches and we're sharing that information. Nice. Um, but general, uh, generally speaking, I would say um, start with the influencers in your in your community. I mean, if you can land um, the influencers in your community, whatever that might mean, um, and then you know, kind of work from there. I think that's a that's a smart strategy. Um, you know, people with large networks, I think, are 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 good. And I'd also say, you know, we had we had Power.com on our platform mm -hmm. for a period of time. Yeah, I remember <laughs> that. 
Yeah, and they they had a it's a, it was an elite price point. Um, they they sold uh, they sold several names. At, Wasn't it like a, a couple grand a year or something? They were yeah, yeah. It was very yeah very high price point. Um, so I'm not going to reveal you know the names of the individuals you know who bought them, but we're we're maintaining that for the people who bought them. We're obviously maintaining that for them. Um, but and I think you know the owner had 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 you know. I'm not faulting him for this. It just is what it is. I think he had certain short-term, you know, kind of motivations. I don't say that as a pejorative. It's just he had a short-term kind of, you know, horizon to to, to uh, profitability or whatever. Um, I think to build any successful business, I mean, it takes time and it takes iterating and it takes a lot of grinding um, to get to, you know, the point where you've got your marketing message nailed, where you've got critical mass with customers or whatever. So, um you know, the main advice that I would have is this is not something from, from our experience, you know, you know, parking is something you throw up on your site and you start seeing maybe, I don't know, 25 cents a day. Or, I mean, I don't know, some sites generate a lot, whatever. But you start seeing kind of traction of some sort. Um, this is a different ballgame. I mean, this, this is a product that requires real marketing and requires kind of reaching out in your community, getting out there, um, potentially even having an active sales force, you know, that's um, joining the local chamber of commerce and that, you know that kind of stuff. Um, so I, I would say you know patience and persistence are important with this. I mean, just like they are with any product, it's not going to be an overnight success. Um, you might you know get lucky here and there, but it's uh, you know it's it, it's still I think it'll take it'll take us probably you know one and a half to three years to get you know really where we want to be with this product. Okay, so I'm yeah. hearing you say it's not just throw it up and expect the money to flow in. People need to do their own marketing. They need to, um, you know, make sure that people know about it and, and understand it so that they'll sign up for it. Um, and one of the ways that you can do that is by finding the influencers in any, uh, you know, topic, any geo, geography, any, you know, topic. If people have fishing.com, for example, or power.com or something like that, find the influencers where when they email people and it shows up at josh at chicago.com, people are saying, oh, Josh has a very cool email address or it shows up on your business card. How do I get one of those? And that people talk about it that way. Right. Okay. That sounds great. Um, Let's see. If you, if other people have questions for you, Josh, I'm going to ask them to post them in the comment section below the video, and then I'll ask you to come back and answer as many as you can. Um, Josh, if someone wants to contact you and say thank you for coming on the show, sharing your background, your your information on domain name investing, and and your ad identity details, what's the best way for them to reach you? Uh, still, uh, jo Josh at Chicago.com. Okay. Yeah, the best way. And. Um, all right, and we talked about you know if people want the email service, they want to learn more about it, they can contact you there. Um, all right, I I think that's it. Josh uh, Metnick, CEO of Chicago.com. Thank you for coming on the show, and thank you for being a domain Sherpa. Okay, Michael, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, to be here, it's, it's cool. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.